We're going to start off just with a bit of clarification about what the situation is. I assume everybody's read the letter, <laughs> uh, but maybe someone should read that out. Does anybody here want to read that out? Mic check. Mic check. An open letter from the Dean of St. Paul's. An open letter from the Dean of St. Paul's. It seems a very long time since you arrived here last weekend. I am very grateful indeed to you for the peaceful nature of your protest. You know that many people around the world, including many Christians, identify with the injustice and inequalities which you, you believe our financial systems perpetuate and support. Your peaceful protests have been significant in voicing the problem. With a heavy heart, I have to tell you that St. Paul's Cathedral has to be closed today until further notice because of the legal requirements placed upon us by fire, health and safety issues. I know you will appreciate that in taking on the burden of responsibility for the care and well-being of people entering our building. We must also be able to ensure everyone's safety and, according to those who are expert in this regard, we cannot do so at the moment. I wanted to inform you of this necessary decision before I announced it to the press. I am therefore appealing to you directly to recognize that a great deal has been achieved by your presence here outside St. Paul's, but that, in order that we might reopen the cathedral as speedily as possible, we ask you to withdraw peacefully. We are concerned about public safety in terms of evacuation and fire hazards and the consequent knock-on effects which this has with regards to our visitors. St. Paul's, through its, its institute and place in the city, will continue to encourage debate on many of the issues you are concerned about. In the meantime, by withdrawing peacefully, you will enable us to reopen the cathedral for people to use for prayer, worship and reflection as soon as we, as we possibly can. With many thanks, Graeme Knowles. So this is why we have called the meeting here today and that is what we will keep the focus to. So we're going to start off just with informational clarifications and, and extra information that we have found out since. So we're going to start off with somebody from the legal working group. Hi. Um, essentially, right, essentially, what this letter means, well, it's really a change in emphasis on the conversation um, between the occupation and the cathedral. It doesn't mean that we need to go anytime soon. In fact, if the cathedral do decide that they wish to remove us from the land, this process won't be able to begin until a court order is produced, which will be on Monday at the earliest. So it's worth bearing in mind throughout this discussion that there's no requirement to go anywhere quick. Okay. Statement on the uh, London Occupy, what is it, occupylondon.org.uk. We are disappointed to learn that the management of St Paul's have decided to close the cathedral this afternoon. In their open letter regarding our peaceful occupation that aims to highlight and challenge the social economic justice in the UK and beyond. Since the beginning of the occupation six days ago, Occupy LSX have tried hard to accommodate the cathedral's concern concerns in any way we can. Over the past 48 hours, we have completely reorganized the camp in response to feedback from the fire brigade, and we have also accepted presence of two large barriers to preserve access to the side door of the cathedral. Both of these measures were accepted by the General Assembly in order that the cathedral's normal operation should not be unduly impacted by our presence. 
This afternoon, we've been told in a, in a telephone call by the Fire Brigade that they have not issued any new requirements above, the above and beyond those already communicated directly to the camp. Therefore, there are no outstanding fire safety issues. What outstanding issues there are appear to be concerned with, firstly, health and safety, and secondly, the cathedral's commercial concerns. We seek clarification from the cathedral as to the precise nature of those health and safety concerns so that we might address them directly. In the short space of time that we have been here, we have successfully liaised with the city authorities and outside bodies to coordinate recycling and sanitation. As to the cathedral's commercial concerns, access to the restaurant has never been blocked by the encampment. The closure of the restaurant by the cathedral has mystified us, especially as it came at the same time we encourage our people to use and support the restaurant. We would much prefer to eat there than in some of the nearby chains. We believe the cathedral is also concerned about their visitor numbers. We have endeavoured to ensure that our schedule does not conflict with the cathedrals, so that their normal operations are not impaired. Clearly, we have become another tourist attraction to the, on the cathedral's doorstep. But since we are not a commercial concern, we are struggling to understand how we have had any financial impact on the cathedral's revenues. We also understand that some individuals were in the process of arranging for a contribution to be made to St Paul's in recognition of their hospitality. It is a shame that the cathedral authorities have decided to take this action before those preparations came to fruition, as we expected them, it, as we expected them to in the next 12 hours. Over the course of this week, we have done a huge amount to draw attention to the crisis of economic and political legitimacy experienced in the UK and mirrored in protest stage across the world. That awareness raising exercise and it's our attempts to provide a truly participatory and accountable forum in which to investigate ways forward will continue. Yeah. News flash. Rachel Sambell, Health and Safety, has advised that the City of London Health and Safety have had no contact with St Paul's Cathedral issues regarding health and safety at the site. Great, so that's, that's kind of the context, that's where we're at. So what I'm going to ask uh, you all to do now is just split into groups of around about 10 people that you're sitting around and just discuss what's on your mind, what you're thinking we should do about this and what's going on and air all your thoughts and then we get feedback from these groups rather than uh, a long process of waiting for everybody who wants to speak to come up at the front. So uh, just self-organise into groups of around about 10 and get discussing what's on your mind. Thank you.